Penguin Highway is another anime movie that Jonathan Pajot would never watch, so you're stuck with me, but which adheres to so many symbolic patterns that everyone interested in symbolism should enjoy this short analysis. If you know the movie and think I've made a mistake somewhere or missed something important, please let me know in the comments. I hope we can have a nice discussion below. Okay, let's get to business. Our protagonist, Aoyama, is a 10 year old boy so obsessed with counting, researching and science that it is hard to see him merely as a character and not as an archetype of sorts, a personification of a human system where every single thing needs to be accounted for. He is the order, the space, the dry land, the symbolic masculine element itself, or animus, if you're a young fan. He is even counting the days until he becomes an adult. Don't be late. I ran a calculation this morning. In another 3,888 days, I'll be an adult. When the town he lives in is mysteriously visited by a group of penguins, Aoyama has six different hypotheses on how that happened. I have six different hypotheses on why they appeared in town so suddenly. Six. The number of men. Of everything that's countable. Naturally, these hypotheses cannot explain the absurd fact of penguins appearing suddenly in the middle of Japan. Yet, this is not the only mystery that this growing boy is facing. Hey, young man, keep your eyes on the chessboard, would you? I am. I'm still focused. No, you're not. That's why I'm winning. I am focused. And check. He is fascinated by the breasts of a woman he met at the dentist's and who teaches him to play chess. He notices that he reacts to them in a different way than to his mother's. It's an important but rather slight sexual undertone, especially for the capabilities of Japanese animation industry. I think the boobs are mysterious. And that mystery attracts Aoyama. It's time to talk a bit about the owner of said bosom. She is always referred to as the lady. She doesn't even have a name, which means she's more like all ladies, or in fact, femininity itself. The feminine, anima. In this way, she is something opposite to Aoyama, something new, mysterious, uncountable, and thus attractive. One of Aoyama's milk teeth is moving and is about to fall off, which is a rather obvious symbol of maturation, but it doesn't happen on its own. It is the lady who is the force behind this process. Be real still. We could say the hierarchy of Aoyama is not complete without the ornamentation, the missing rest, so it needs it to mature. But pulling out a tooth is merely a foreshadowing, the first step of what the lady is going to do to him later on. Yet we can already enjoy this symbolic moment quite a lot, especially with the drop of blood, this little bit of death Aoyama has to experience. During the same scene, it turns out that it is the lady herself who can manifest penguins out of inanimate objects. Huh? Of course, life-giving, animation, coming from anima, is the fundamental characteristic of the feminine. Another one is being the judge of the masculine, putting up a challenge to it. Try solving this mystery. That is, if you think that you can. The lady loves penguins. They cheer her up, and in fact, whenever they are, they are created, they are always a force for good in the plot. However, the symbol of the chaotic feminine wouldn't be full without monsters. There's this creepy monster called the Jabberwocky, and I keep dreaming about it. It turns out that the lady had read Lewis Carroll's Alice, and now has nightmares with Jabberwocky in them. The inside-out world of Through the Looking Glass is another foreshadowing of what's yet to come and the familiar symbol of the upside-down realm. For now, it is enough to say that the lady spawns monsters that she calls Jabberwockies when she is in distress or unconscious. The 
and that they devour penguins. During one of his exchanges with his father, Aoyama asks him about the edge of the world. It's most natural that he would be interested in such a thing, since he is attracted to chaos so much. We know, mostly of course from Jonathan's fantastic drawing, that the edge of the world, or the cosmic mountain, is where chaos reigns. By the way, the name Aoyama could be translated as blue or green mountain. The edge of the world, huh? Not literally, anyway. I know that the actual edge of the world would have to be much farther away. While the boy thinks the edge must be very far away, his dad offers him a trick to illustrate it does not necessarily have to be so. For example, do you think you could put the entire world into this pouch? Aoyama is puzzled as his dad proceeds to flip the entire cosmic hierarchy with one simple move. And then this. Take a look. The inside has become the outside. This way, all that is outside is the orderly world, while the edge and then chaos are on the inside. And now the world is contained within the pouch. Is it just my twisted mind, or does this pouch resemble something feminine as well now? One way or another, this scene is key to understanding another strange phenomenon that Aoyama and his friends discover in the forest. Oh, wow. Quite unsurprisingly, for a lover of symbolism, they call this sphere the ocean. Right away, we learn that it should be approached with utmost caution, as it can be dangerous. We shouldn't get too close to the ocean. These spikes come out when you're close to it, so we don't know how safe this thing is. Later, we learn that the lady is tightly connected to the ocean, as it gives her the energy to live and create life. In fact, as the ocean is the unknown, the chaotic, the one that gives life and takes it, the feminine. We can safely assume that the lady is the ocean. To prop up the symbolic imagery a bit, the boys discover that the river found outside of the forest where the ocean appeared is actually circular. This river? It has no end. It just circles around to the same place. A round river flowing around the entire world at its edge and into itself was called Okeanos in ancient Greece and it symbolized not unlike the snake eating its tail the eternal flow of time and its circularity of course the word Okeanos is the etymological source of the word ocean all these mysterious phenomena left Aoyama absolutely puzzled and no matter how much research he put into solving them he could not reach his goal. Finally, the rescue came from his father again. The father, who already is mature, whose hierarchy is already complete with the rest. And if that doesn't help, try to stop thinking for a while. It's rather convenient that in English, rest is both a verb and a noun. It facilitates understanding of what completeness is. Dan it instructs Aoyama to collect all of his observations on one page and then rest. Stop thinking, which is necessary to complete his work. Initially, the boy disagrees as he doesn't see the point in this. However, the longer one tries to ma maintain perfect order, the more he or she risks being completely flooded by chaos and total destruction of the faulty hierarchy. That is why the ocean sphere, that rip in the fabric of reality, grows bigger and bigger. Aoyama then tries one more way to understand the lady by imitating her. She hasn't been eating anything for days, so Aoyama tries to do the same for three days. Fasting is a way of opening oneself to death. So it's finally a chance to complete Aoyama's work. He gets ill and feverish. And in this fever, he has a dream 
after which he reaches his eureka moment. Huh? 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 Miss! He goes to the lady and explains everything he has learned. Here we can clearly see the other side of their relationship. It is not only the order that is completed by opening itself up to a bit of chaos, but also chaos gets organized and ordered, thus becoming understandable. And the ocean isn't a physical object? If it's a hole? A hole? A rip in the world? Or the masculine stood up to the challenge of the feminine and at least partially, solved its mystery. By explaining his findings to the lady, Aoyama gave her a reason, a meaning, so that she understood who she was and what she should do. And it was high time to do so, as time had been speeding up and the sphere of chaos started to be a real threat to the city. On their way to the ocean, they noticed that Well, you don't say. Anyway, as they plunge into the ocean, the lady goes back where she came from. But for Aoyama, it's a jump to the depth. The final step of becoming a new human. A type of baptism. After mending the rift in reality with the help of penguins, the lady and the young man return, and the water from the ocean, instead of flooding everything, cleanses the city and revitalizes it. The lady cannot exist without the ocean, but she still manages to talk to Aoyama and admits that Of course you aren't. You're an archetype. Since chaos is the endless source of the unaccounted for, the lady asks Aoyama to continue his struggle of transforming the unknown into the known. And when that day finally comes, you'll be able to solve my mystery. And then disappears. In the final scene, we can see the full extent of Aoyama's transformation. He still counts the days to his adulthood but he also expresses hope to meet the lady again someday and that he doesn't base this hope on reason. This isn't a hypothesis. It's a personal belief. I know it. But what is most important, he admits to having loved her. And how much I loved her. And this is how we learn how growing up and becoming complete is inseparably connected to learning how to love that is, to leave behind self-centeredness and open oneself to the other that we recognize as different. Finally, we learned how it is no other than love that can resolve the polarization of the, of the extremes. To sum it all up, it is nice to see that the cosmic patterns are indeed universal and can be noticed also in the products of a Far Eastern culture. It is a bit of a relief to see that there are still works of popular art being made that follow the patterns without trying to constantly flip them for the sake of current year's propaganda. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more material like that, please let me know by subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment.